Chicago Bears offensive coordinator Luke Getze said right at the Senior Bowl that there are players on the roster down there that he wants his team to take in the NFL draft. So we're going to go through the top prospects from Mobile that could be future Chicago Bears. You are Locked On Bears, your daily Chicago Bears podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Locked On Bears, and I'm your host, Lauren Cox. I'm here to bring you your daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. You can follow me on Twitter at CoxSports1. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked On Bears. You can like Locked On Bears on Facebook. Join the Locked On Bears Facebook group for even more Bears talk. And make sure you hit that subscribe button on the Locked On Bears YouTube channel to keep up with all of our video podcasts as well. Thanks for making Locked on Bears your first listen today. Today's podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online, available to people worldwide. And they have a special offer for Locked on Bears listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. On the show today, We'll take Luke Getze at his word and look at the senior bowl prospects he could be most interested in. We're obviously going to focus most heavily on players that he directly coached on the American roster, but he got an up close and personal look at all of them while he was down there. We'll look at some wide receivers, some defensive linemen, some offensive linemen, and some guys that have extra special connections to Luke Getze, guys he recruited when he was a college offensive coordinator a handful of years ago as well. Let's start with some of the headliners for Luke Getze because it was in an interview. It was either, I think it was immediately after the game. Getze was asked about the players down there and said, yeah, definitely there are guys down here that we're going to draft, that we want to draft, that we're very excited about having the opportunity to draft after having coached them up in person. We saw last year that more than half of the Bears draft picks, almost all of them, were players who performed at the Senior Bowl or at the other college football all-star games. And it appeared that the Bears coaches and front office and scouts all really valued what these players did during those practices against other top talent and also during the actual game down in Mobile. And that was even without Luke Getze and a couple of other Bears coaches directly coaching them at the Senior Bowl. So it seems pretty clear like we're going to see a handful of additional players drafted from this Senior Bowl group, especially even more depending on if the Bears trade down and acquire even more picks in this draft. So if we want to start with some of the guys that really stood out kind of across multiple positions here, certainly it was not a wide receiver class in Mobile that was strong, but two guys really won the week. And one of them had a a pretty strong showing in the game as well. Let's start with the one that Luke Getze coached, wide receiver Nathaniel Dell from Houston. He's a small slot receiver. I'm just glancing down and finding his height. He's he measured in at five, eight and a half ish and 163 pounds. So he's not going to be a, a, a first or a second round pick at that size. But a guy, you know, third, fourth, maybe fifth round is where some teams are going to have to drop him to because he's small. But he's also the fastest player on the field, the most explosive player on the field down at those senior bowl practices. That when he had the ball in his hands or when he's just running a route, he's got a little bit more juice than everybody else. He gets in and out of his breaks faster. He changes direction without slowing down nearly as much as other players. It's smooth. It's explosive. It's dynamic. I think one other player recorded a faster top speed, you know, straight line, you know, vertical speed up in the 20 mile an hour range. But he was the guy who was really all over the field and and winning, creating more separation than anybody else because not only was he faster and more explosive, but also ran sneaky, crisp, routes could just explode in and out and not give the defensive back a sense of where he was going to go. He was very difficult to cover, and he's also very difficult to bring down after the catch. The other wide receiver that won the week that I think will rise even more so than Nathaniel Dell that I'd love to see the Chicago Bears try and draft is out of Stanford, the wide receiver Michael Wilson. He had a really nice touchdown in the game. It might have been called back by a penalty now that I think about it, but really, really strong route runner in addition to bringing quite a bit of size. I want to say he's, as I double check his side, I want to be accurate on it. 
six foot one and five eight, so six foot one and a half, two hundred and sixteen pounds. But he too, even at that size, looked a little bit faster than a lot of the other guys on his team, and just smoother. He was the one guy who was like consistently getting open where players were having trouble covering him, but he made difficult catches away from his body, has a big frame, has size and strength. He kind of looks like a like a sneaky number one wide receiver, right? He's not a number one wide receiver just yet, but like at 6'1", 216, like he's, he's got enough of the size and he's got enough of the speed and he's got enough of the route running ability that he's a guy that I think is really easy to get excited about. And those two are really the wide receivers you have to, you have to love. As far as a couple of guys on the defensive line, a guy like Ali Gay from LSU is an edge rusher who showed a lot of great speed and being able to turn the corner off of the edge. Certainly don't think he's super, super refined in terms of like a, a vast repertoire of pass rush moves, but it's the kind of speed and bend ability on the edge that you can't teach. And you feel like you can teach him a lot of the stuff. I th- think he had a sack in the game and we saw a few different times at practice where he could just kind of run around some of the right tackles here and not just actually run around. Like you run at him and it's one move and you're around them on the outside, but it, he's so quick to get to that spot that they can't keep up with him. Slower right tackles that we saw down there in Mobile. And I think Gay was a guy that gets, he got to see quite a bit of coaching him on that side of the ball on that defensive line. And on the national team, on the interior, a guy that I think we're going to keep hearing more and more about throughout this draft process is Keanu Benton, the nose tackle from Wisconsin. Just a, a real athletic freak of a nose tackle, fluid, explosive, heavy motor, a guy that, you know, I talked to a little bit down there. He actually is from my hometown, went to my high school and everything. And, you know, good human being, and also really talented, mean, nasty football player who guards and centers have a lot of trouble keeping up with because he's just that athletic for the position. You know, he, he is a nose tackle, so we, you keep it sort of under normal like expectations there for a nose tackle. But a guy that gets a lot of sacks, is able to be a penetrator. He hasn't looked to me always like a guy who, trust me, I watched a lot of his tape and a lot of his games actually in person. He's not a guy that I know that I don't feel like has like a great go to counter, you know, like he'll win on that initial penetration and then, and then he'll just sort of motor it the rest of the way there's, there's still development and consistency. You want to see him building, but for like a disruptive athletic nose tackle, he's a real solid, like late second round type guy is about the range. We keep seeing him now where perhaps that Baltimore pick that Chicago has could be a good range for Keanu, or if they add another second or even a third round pick and you get lucky with him, maybe falling down there. That's another one of these freak athlete defensive tackles, depending on, you know, if the bears don't get Carter with the first pick. And I heard down in mobile that Deron Payne likely won't become a free agent and that Washington won't let him go. So if you don't get that big defensive tackle in free agency, or that number one overall pick or the first round pick, then Benton is a great consolation prize. Not even later, I would say later in the draft, not even late in the draft, but just a day two nose tackle consolation prize that would be really fun to see on this Bears defensive line. Really, the strengths down in Mobile, the strong position was the offensive line. And it was a group that I personally watched Luke Getze pay a ton of attention to. I watched Ryan Poles spend most of his time, he and Ian Cunningham, standing on the sideline watching the offensive line group. So we'll go through some of the top names there that Luke Getze could have his eye on from Mobile next on Locked on Bears. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Therapy Online. BetterHelp is here to help you with your mental health in 2023. It's not about self-help or a specifically like a crisis line, but it's about getting you matched directly with a therapist who you can meet with online, remotely, 100% virtual, on your schedule when you need it. And that's what I love about BetterHelp because my weekly online therapy that I do is such an important part of my mental health regimen. I like to think of it as like just how you go to the gym to take care of your body. You go to therapy to help take care of your mind, not because you're just, you know, on edge and feeling like everything is falling apart, but just to work through the things in life that come up. It's not, it's not a, there's no shame about it. There's it's, it's a good thing. Like it's good for you. And I think more people need to take part in therapy with our friends at BetterHelp. It's super glad to have them as a sponsor here and glad to make it easier for you to get unstuck with BetterHelp. You can learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. This podcast is also brought to you by our new friends at FanDuel. 
This year, the only app that you'll need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. We're really excited about having them as our sports book partner because they are that number one sports book in America. And it's a great time to join if you've never used FanDuel before because they have so many great features that can make your sports betting that much more fun and easy. Download FanDuel now so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. You're guaranteed some kind of something, whether you're right or wrong about the Super Bowl. And there's a lot of different ways between scoring props, player props, stats, touchdowns, special teams, Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts stuff specifically. So many different ways to bet on the Super Bowl with our friends at FanDuel. Their app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to claim your no-sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. I really think the Chicago Bears will draft at least one offensive lineman from this senior bowl group, considering... Uh, Ryan Poles drafted like four of them last year from the All-Star Games and four of them total and two or three of them at least from the All-Star Games, including Braxton Jones. Also, you know, Dominic Robinson on the defensive line and a few other guys there, but they had success dipping into that talent pool and they seemed to really value what those linemen do down at the game and down at practice. And it was a very, very strong class and a very strong week for a lot of those guys. We start with the one guy that I want to make sure to mention that Getzey didn't directly coach. He was on the other team, but saw in the games. Well, didn't even see in the games because he practiced for one day. But Dewan Jones from Ohio State is really the headliner here. 6'7", six, 6'8", six, I think it was. 6'8", six, eight, three, six, eight, 375 pounds is what he measured in at. And he moved like a guy who was, you know, 300 pounds, 75 pounds lighter. He was fluid, athletic. Like, you're not going to confuse him for a smaller guy. But when you see somebody that big, you don't expect him to move that well. He practiced one day, left with a concussion between the days. He practiced the whole time. I talked to him after that practice. He was, he seemed fine and normal. Then the next day, it turns out he had a concussion and wasn't able to practice or participate the rest of the week because he was so good on the first day that he didn't need to practice anymore. He showed everything he needed to, and NFL teams are falling in love, and I think you're going to see him rise very quickly up draft boards. I think he's a first-round pick when it's all said and done. Might be not in perfectly the Bears' range there, unless you trade down and maybe acquire an early second round pick and maybe trade back up, or maybe he slides out of the first round. You know, some, there's there's some good depth in this offensive line class and maybe he's somehow slips. I, I, I don't see it as, as likely for him, but like another guy in that same range, the number one center in this draft was Luke Getzey had his hands on him all week. John Michael Schmitz from Minnesota, perfect scheme fit for the bears. Great lateral movement guy that, you know, you can pull and get out in front as well and like stays in front of speed easily. Now, don't get me wrong. He's not, you're not going to mistake him for the biggest, strongest center. I don't think he's like a terrible at anchoring. Like we're not talking about Hronis Grassu level, like get walked back. But, you know, you do sacrifice a little bit of strength and size when you have the kind of mobility that he does. But he's still clearly the best center in this draft class. Very technically strong. When he gets his hands on you, he's not letting you go. He's not getting called for the holding either. And generally a guy that is plug and play week one starter at center. Looks like a surefire 10-year starter, even if he's never like the best center in the NFL or whatever. I mean, but I think there's ability there to still add strength to his frame and get something e- even greater there. I mean, he's going to be, you know, your classic drafted in the 20s range of the first round. And again, would take some kind of trade maneuvering for the Bears to get there. But if you want to lock in that center of the future, John Michael Schmitz was the guy down in Mobile. And on Luke Getze's team. Also throw in Osiris Torrance, the guard from Florida. Not nearly as much of a scheme fit. You know, he's a little bit more of a slower plotting gap scheme type of guard. Although the Bears ran a lot of gap scheme last year more than we might have thought heading into the season. So they're not as scheme specific as we think of like Green Bay and and San Francisco and Tennessee and 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 the Rams. Excuse me, I was trying to think that was the team I kept trying to get to. Big strong butt kicker of a guard. You know, you plug him in a right guard, he's a road grader, or, you know, certainly if the Bears move on from Cody Whitehair due to salary cap reasons, he could be an easy option to plug in at left guard. Really just strong, solid people mover and not slow in pass protection either. Very kind of standard, like really good end of the first round type guard that you're going to feel really good about and feel like, again, has that 10-year starter potential. Darnell Wright from Tennessee is another name that's hovering around this range, but could be there in the second round. If the Bears get an early second round pick, another one of these big 
right tackles. Not as big as Dewan Jones, like we talked about, but uh, Darnell Wright, 6'5", 342. And I think Dewan Jones moved better, despite being three inches and 30 pounds heavier, which says a lot about Jones. I don't think Wright was like terribly, terribly slow, but a guy who's a little bit on the slower side, but not so slow that he brings you down your board too far, but it's just you acknowledge that's part of his skill set, his strengths and weaknesses, and you work within that, that he knows if he's going to face a speed guy off the edge, that he needs to set a little bit wider and understand that he needs to have that help on the inside if someone's going to cut back inside, and you work with it, and I think he can still be a very solid starting right tackle in the NFL. Another one of these guys that like, a little bit of a black hole when you get when you when he gets his hands on you and gets absorbed and he gets that contact when he initiates contact you're just not going anywhere he's got you locked down he can shut you down and throw you aside and be that big strong physical right tackle here that i think would be an easy upgrade for the bears on that right side if they're not able to add anybody that they love in free agency still going to be a lot of free agency that changes some of these draft needs but it's it's already got the bears with their mind on some of these prospects and some of these prospects Luke Getze has had his mind on for quite some time. Some guys he's known for four or five years ever since he first got to know them. And we'll have even more intel than beyond what he got at the Senior Bowl and what every other team is going to get from tapes and interviews. We'll, we'll go through the players that Luke Getze recruited, got to know as high schoolers, trying to get them to, I believe it was Mississippi, where he was the offensive coordinator a few years ago. Next on Locked on Bears. The Locked On Bears podcast is brought to you by our friends at Blue Nile. Valentine's Day is coming up, which means romance is in the air even more than usual. I don't need to tell all you lovebirds out there that you've probably had your date plans on the calendar for weeks. But have you found the perfect Valentine's Day gift yet? Whether you're celebrating this day of romance or whether you're ready to pop the question, you can find jewelry as unique as she is with modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. With Blue Nile, you can find the perfect piece of jewelry for every special moment in life, or even create the custom engagement ring of her dreams. They got simple online tools that let you choose the diamond shape, size, and clarity, as well as the setting style. And Blue Nile's bench jewelers will then handcraft that perfect piece exactly to your specifications. And their diamond price guarantee allows you to compare a competitor's diamond against one of theirs, and Blue Nile can even meet or beat their price. And of course, every order is insured and arrives quickly in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shipping is free and so are returns. Right now, you can save up to 50% at BlueNile.com. That's B-L-U-E-N-I-L-E.com for up to 50% off. BlueNile.com. It's one thing to get to know some of these NFL draft prospects for three days of practices and really like seven days of being together down in Mobile. It's another thing for Luke Getze to have been talking to these guys as high school coaches years ago to have been part of the recruiting process of trying to bring them to his school at the time, which I'm trying to filibuster to double check and confirm. It was Mississippi State. I apologize to the uh, the Bulldog listeners out there and the what is it? I didn't know Old Miss, the Rebels, and the Rebels out there that are mad at me in uh, sort of mixing them up. He was the offensive coordinator and wide receivers coach at Mississippi State in 2018. And that just so happened to be the time when a lot of these now senior players were coming out of high school and looking to go to college. And Luke Getze, being a, a position coach and coordinator, very involved with being on the road and trying to get some of these players to his school. And I think there's a certain extra level, not of like, scouting the talent, right, of knowing his skill set that much better. That's not really what it's about, but it's about knowing their character, who they are as people, that you know, their and their football IQ too, but really knowing them off the field in the way that Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus have so constantly emphasized like having the right guys, the right fit, the right culture with these players, wanting guys that really truly love football. I think Luke Getze will have an added edge over a lot of other teams and coaches on these players specifically that he recruited in terms of getting to know them even better off the field and having known them for longer. We'll start with a running back from Oklahoma, Eric Gray. This was a guy who I think would be a pretty good fit with what the Bears need at running back right now. He had a pretty solid week. I think his teammates voted him as the practice player of the week. I got to be honest with you. I didn't watch a ton of the running backs during practice. So I'm not going to be able to sit here and pretend to say like, oh, I saw him do this or this, or this in a rep, but we did see in the game 
He had a couple of nice catches and made some plays after the catch. He had almost 250 receiving yards last year at Oklahoma, plus being a dynamic 1,000-yard rusher, a guy who fights through contact pretty well, stays upright, and has some speed and a little bit of wiggle in there as well. Not going to be, certainly you know, not a first-round pick, probably not a second-round pick, but still, like, you know, if you could get him in day three, especially if you acquire a couple other draft picks, I and mean, I don't have a great range for him, but I wouldn't take him any earlier than, like, you know, I, I don't want to, the Bears shouldn't take a running back earlier than the fourth round just because of the other needs on this roster for the most part. But if you can get him in that sort of range, I think Gray would be a nice fit with Khalil Herbert and maybe, maybe David Montgomery, maybe not in this Chicago Bears backfield. They need more of a receiving threat and he can be that with some blocking ability too and, and no question about his ability to run. There is a wide receiver who we didn't talk about who, you know, had, had a good week, but not a great week. It wasn't like, I think Dylan and Wilson, who we talked about, were kind of the two above the rest. But another wide receiver that was pretty good, but also was recruited by Luke Getze in state was Mississippi's Jonathan Mingo. Ended up going to Mississippi instead of state. So uh, maybe there was some some hard feelings there. But no, the, every, every indication from the players down there is that they were excited to see Luke Getze again. And Mingo is definitely one of these wide receivers that has a limited ceiling. Never going to be a number one guy because he's just not, not a speed guy, right? He doesn't, he's not fast. He's not like super fast or super explosive. You didn't see him in drills creating a ton of separation as a route runner, but he is that big bodied, strong, wide frame, contested catch, possession wide receiver. A guy who is open even when he's covered, largely because sometimes he's more covered than he should. Like 6'1", 226 pounds, catches it away from his body, really got some length to it as well. The guy, when he gets off the bus, you see like that's that's a football player. Some of the biggest hands in Mobile, I don't have the measurement in front of me, but it was said to be humongous hands that make it easier for him to catch those balls as well. And again, we're not talking about a first or second round pick necessarily at wide receiver there, but a guy who could be an important part of a wide receiving core that that solid number two, number three, who's going to make some plays for you, but isn't going to run away from opponents and do, do, you know dominate and be that super dynamic playmaker, but can be a reliable go-to kind of guy. I said, maybe a, maybe a number two, but you know, a number three, number four possession type guy that you feel like can make some plays in the red zone as well and be a big body for you down there. Both of those guys, I think, would be good fits for the Bears you know, later on in the draft. A couple of defensive players that Getze was also involved in the recruiting process for, uh, Alabama defensive lineman Byron Young. I thought he was, there were, there were two Alabama defensive linemen down there. The other one was DJ Dale. And I thought Young was the guy who looked like clearly the better one. And Dale's kind of the bigger, I don't say more nose tackle type. They're not that different in size. I think Byron Young is 6'3", 297, and DJ Dale is 6'1", 302. So, you know, Young's got a little bit more length, but Dale's a little bit like shorter and squattier and thicker. And I just thought, you know, I, I kind of watching them two side by side quite a bit, looked to me like Young was the one who had just a little bit more juice, a little bit more disruptive, a little bit more active on his drills. Like it, it's pass rush drills. So they're a little bit inclined to help the defense there because the offensive linemen are one-on-one. -on -one. So I, I hesitate to read too much into that. And it's not to say that he was great, but he was a player that I thought, did better than some of the others at his position that, again, Getsy recruited and Getsy got to got to coach in person in Mobile. Last one, Auburn defensive end Derek Hall. Definitely one of these first-round type picks. Might be too close to the middle of the first round for the Bears on either end of a potential trade down here, but high-motor, big, physical guy, but not like elite speed and not like elite strength in that way. So there's some questions about his ceiling. Like, it seems like you can kind of plug and play and get... You're going to get a solid defensive lineman who can get it after the quarterback some and play the run pretty well, but like never going to be the super, super dynamic athlete who's just going to have the, you know, the double digit sack type performance there. But you really like what you're getting. You feel like there's, there's a real floor there. That's going to be someone who helps out your football team for a long time, even if he's maybe never the pro bowl guy. So maybe the range is a little tough there for, for Derek Hall, but if, you know, if teams start liking some of these athletic guys a little more and Hall falls towards the end of the first round or into the second round, depending on how he tests for, you know, the combine and such, maybe all of a sudden Luke Getz is able to have a reunion there with a player he coached and recruited. So hopefully that gives you a better idea of some of the guys the Bears should be most interested down at the Senior Bowl. Some exciting players who played well, who Getz gets to know or has already known for quite some time. I know we, we don't want to get too ahead of ourselves with the NFL draft. We still have a lot of free agency still to go and a lot of trade rumors 
murmurs, speculations lingering around there. That's what we're going to talk about as the week goes on here on the Locked On Bears podcast. So make sure you hit that subscribe button wherever you listen to Locked On Bears because that's going to be the best way to keep up with all of our daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. Check out the video form on the Locked On Bears YouTube channel as well. Click like, give us a comment, hit that subscribe button, the bell for notifications as well. It really helps us continue to grow the show and reach more Chicago Bears fans. Thanks for making Locked On Bears your first listen today. If you're looking for your second listen, the Locked On NFL podcast is breaking down all things Super Bowl in the coming days, keeping you covered on all the latest news from around the NFL as well. So make that your second listen. Locked On Podcast Network is your team every day. So come back again tomorrow for another episode of Locked On Bears and another opportunity to bear down.